So what we're going to do is we're going to draw Lewis dot diagrams of some simple covalent structures and draw their uh, orbitals to see if we can understand hybridization and need for it. So let's get started. So we have CH4, nice if my pen is ready to write, and CH4 is here. And I'm going to start with carbon in the middle. And I put four valence electrons and I put them equidistant from each other. Based on VSEPR theory, electrons are going to repel themselves into the most stable shape. Now, two dimensionally, it looks pretty planar, but it's actually a tetrahedral, as we'll get to. Hydrogen has one valence, so I'll put that as an X to show that that's its valence contributing to the pair, which makes the bond. Okay, now whether I write them side by side, top and bottom, it does not matter. A pair is a bond. Carbon has that fill doctet by gaining four more. It was 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, so it needed four to fill out that octet rule, 2 dash um, 4 right now, so it needed four more electrons. Now, what kind of hybridization exists? The first step always is doing the electron dot diagram. And the reason you do that is because it's going to give you some hints as to what kind of hybridization we have. What are the hints after I correctly did a Lewis dot diagram? Well, the hints are as follows. Find pairs of electrons. So if you look, I see 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the central atom has four pairs of electrons that give us four bonds that are exactly the same. What do we know about methane? Well, we know methane, the bonds, the carbon-hydrogen bond, is exactly the same for each bond between methane. That's problematic if we don't have any way to understand that. Why is that problematic? Well, if we break this up, the individual carbon has 2s2 filled and 2p2. Well, how does it have four available bonding spots? Okay, well, we say that one of these electrons was probably excited into the p. And now we have what? Count them. Four available uh, places, orbitals, where it could share. But that would mean that there's an s orbital and a p orbital. Okay, so that doesn't work out very well. The only way to explain that these bond angles can be the same is that somehow the s and p mixed. So an S and three P's came together to make something called an sp3 orbital. So these are sp3 orbitals. Okay. So anytime you have four pairs of electrons surrounding the central atom, it's sp3 orbitals. Now why? Well, very simply, if carbon was not hybridized this way, and we had an s orbital, okay, that'd be the two s orbital, and we had the p's, now the p's are probably going to be about the same size since n indexes size, this is n equals 2. I'm going to show the p's a little bit bigger. Here's a px, or py if you want to call it, px if you want to, and pz coming at you. All right, and those are the three orbitals. For those that are not following along, we have three orbital boxes, and we have what? Here's one orbital for one box, here's another orientation, and here's the third. S only has one orientation, that's the sphere. Put the electrons in. There's two for the what? Let's do this before it was excited. One, two, and let's put the other two in. Okay, well, any way you like, you can put them, but as you can see, these would be 90 degree bond angles. Okay, these are 90 degrees no matter what you go, and we know from experimental design and from other experiments that when something is sp3 hybridized, no matter what, if it's sp3 hybridized, the bonding is 109.5 degrees. Okay, so how would I draw this? Well, I'm going to take an s and three p's, and we're going to put them together. And that's what we have. All right, so if I get rid of this again, remember, I learned that I had four equal orbitals. Here's sp3. And how do I know that? There were three what? Four pairs of electrons. If there's four pairs of electrons in the central atom, that means you have four what? Different orbitals. These are four different orbitals. Okay, remember, I got that from doing my Lewis dot diagram. That's the key. Pairs of electrons, count them around the central atom, tell me the hybridization. There are four. So an S and three P's came together 
to make four sp3s. And s and what? Four and three p's came together to make four equal or four orbitals in, four orbitals out. Okay, hydrogen is one s2. Big deal. One s1. Sorry, that's hydrogen. That's helium. So one s1. Now hydrogen is not the central atom here. So let's put the electron in for the carbon, carbon S4 valence. They can get in this shape that's other than 90 because of what? Four balloons repelling themselves. And now we have the hydrogen, which is 1s1. Well, I don't need to hybridize hydrogen because hydrogen is a terminal atom. It's an atom on the outside. So I don't need hybridization to explain it. Remember, hybridization is just a theory to explain the shapes that we know based on these dots, these or arrangements that these dots or electrons make by bending and finding a new stable orientation. So that you understand that shape you're looking at is called a tetrahedral. And when you're sp3, you're in the tetrahedral family. So this represents a tetrahedral. Okay? That's the shape. Basically, you have four pairs of electrons repelling themselves in a very, very symmetrical shape. Now the reasoning, you see it flat this way, is because if you take a tetrahedral and you do what to it? Flatten it out, I'm trying the best I can, you get that planar shape, okay? You get that planar shape to it. But it's not really flat, so there it is. It's really like this. So four pairs of electrons find a very stable position like this. And it's important to understand it three dimensions. Okay, so the bond angles in sp3 are always 109.5, and the bond energies are somewhere between an s and 3p's. So they're all different. Okay, so that's CH4. Okay, so let's go CH3F. Okay, first step, draw a Lewis dot diagram. Very simple. So I do CH3F. Start with the central atom that has, they can have more than one bond. So carbon, and it has one, two, three, four. Okay, and hydrogen brings one. This hydrogen brings another. This hydrogen brings another. And this fluorine, if you remember, has seven valence electrons. It's 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So seven valence electrons. So it's going to have seven. Okay, how do I figure out the hybridization? Okay, well, I count the pairs of electrons in around the central atom. Here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. Bang. If there's four pairs of electrons, that means an S. And how many P's? Three. There's one S plus three. Three P's, that gives me four orbitals all together. It has to be sp3 hybridization. So let's draw it. Okay? All starts with the Lewis dot diagram. So here we go, party people. I've got my carbon in the middle, so I have sp3. So again, I have one here. That's one orbital. Here's another orbital. Here's another orbital. Here's another orbital. Notice there's no S to draw here because the S has been mixed right with three p's put the valence in put the valence in put the valence in put the valence in for the carbon hydrogen as we just saw has one valence electron by sharing it feels like it's as stable as oxygen and i definitely forgot to add the what the fluorine okay so let's put the fluorine in that was just methane okay now fluorine only has one what free orbital. It's 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. It has one orbital it needs to fill. This does not have to be hybridized to draw because don't need to use it to explain it. Hybridization is just a way to explain the valence shell theory of things we already know. Okay, well fluorine is, doesn't have to be hybridized. So I'm going to use unhybridized p. This is one orbital. This is another. So this is P, let's say X, P, Y, and then P, Z coming at you. And this is the S. So fluorine has seven valence electrons, two in the S. Let's go one, two, another in this P, and the rest filled. 
Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice I don't put any here because filling these two right here by this bond fills this p orbital. That's why you can't bond on the outside. It's a terminal atom. It doesn't need hybridization. And there it is in all of its glory. And that's CH3F. Okay, moving forward. All right, so we've taken care of CH3F, CH2, and let's now do uh, PCL3. PCL3. Okay, phosphorus is in the middle. As we learn, it's going to have five valence electrons, so you put them there. It's under nitrogen, so it has very similar type of chemical reactivity. Chlorine is here. And chlorine, just like fluorine, has seven valence electrons. Okay. And that's a Lewis dot diagram. Notice phosphorus has its octet, and each chlorine has its octet. First step, tell me how many pairs of electrons. Well, we have one, two, three bonding, but now we have a lone pair. We add that. Pairs of electrons are going to repel themselves into what shape? Into a tetrahedral shape. So if my finger was that round atom that dropped, we'd have this tetrahedral shape. So we've got this scenario again. So if it's a tetrahedral, we know the bond angle is 109.5. We know the bonds are the same. And the hybridization, you guessed it, is sp3. How do I know? Because that there's what? One, two, three, four. So we're counting bonding and non-bonding pairs around the central atom. Okay, the bond angles are about 109.5, but there is a little change to that as we go, as we, as we draw the structure. Okay, so we have phosphorus in the middle. It's got a lone pair. And it's got its what? Five. And as we said, it's sp3. It's got four pairs or four places where electrons can be. So it's sp3 hybridized. Of course, we have the chlorines. Now, this is getting a little harder. The chlorines, three of them, are going to overfit. Now, chlorine, just like fluorine, is what? Is going to be terminal. Only one place does bonding have to occur. It's got seven valence electrons, so it only has one orbital that needs to be filled. So to draw this, I don't have to draw hybridization. Unhybridized p orbital. Another one, and there's three. And my markers are dying here. It's driving me nuts. And then we've got our S. And there's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice this P is filled. And we'll do the next thing over here. Okay, we're doing it three times. I think it's time for a uh, backup here. One. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the same thing here. Drawing unhybridized P's. There's three orbitals. And the S. One. Oops, the X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And there you go. All right. SP3 hybridized. Now, the only little um, caveat here is that that lone pair of electrons, because it doesn't have a nucleus, or the nucleus is here, right, to push it away, these pair actually con contract a little bit closer. So they actually repel these electrons more. So this bond angle goes down to about 104 with a lone pair. And that's an approximation, okay? So I have sp3 hybridized with a lone pair, okay, what we're dealing with here is a tetrahedral for the electrons, but something called a pyramidal, top of a three-sided pyramidal. We call this trigonal. Trigonal is for three sides. It's top of a three-sided three -sided pyramid. Okay? So we have two types of words. It's important you understand. We have the electron domain geometry, which is tetrahedral, four pairs of electrons, even if they're not bonded. And now we have the, the, the molecular geometry, the geometry where the atoms are. And because it's a three-sided pyramid on top, we call it trigonal pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal, top of a three-sided pyramid. Okay? So moving forward.
So now we're going to get to PLC. Let's do four. Number four, H2S. I like this one. Okay, H2S. So we know hydrogen's terminal, so now we're left with sulfur. So sulfur is in the middle, and it has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hydrogen has one. Can we guess the hybridization here? How many pairs of electrons, bonding or not? And you would count one, two, three, four. That means an S and three Ps came together. Yes, it's SP3. Okay, now, so what we have in this case is what we have is we have two lone pairs. Okay, so we still have the tetrahedral shape. Okay, if I can even draw it or do it. I still have the tetrahedral shape, and now I'm kind of doing it, right? But I'm showing it a little differently now. So this is tetrahedral as far as the what? Electron domain geometry. SP3 is always tetrahedral for the domain geometry. But where are the, elect where are the atoms? Where the atoms are, we call this bent. So in the SP3 family, we have three molecular shapes. Tetrahedral, which is where you have the two atoms. We have the one is top of a pyramid. Three-sided pyramid. Okay, and then of course missing two lone pairs is a bent shape. Okay, very important. So let's draw this. So we have an S in the middle, SP3 hybridized. We have two lone pairs, one here, and now we have the S who's terminal. Now, it looks like it may be 90 degrees because I'm drawing it that way, okay? Two lone pairs, all right? I'm drawing it like that, but it's not flat. It's really three-dimensional, okay? So that's it right there. SP3, 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 just S, okay? So pretty simple. And it's a bent molecule, and this bent molecule is asymmetrical, so this molecule would be polar. All right, let's do five. C2F6. All right, C2F6. So I have two carbons. I'm going to put together an organic chemistry. You'll learn that. And you know, if I have five, I have six Fs. Put them around. And if you put the valence electrons, you can see each carbon has what one bond. And then you put the valence electrons for the fluorine. And you get this idea here, okay? Very simple. And yes, if you're doing this on a test, you must show all the non-bonding electrons. Fluorine has seven valence, so that's what we have there. Now, who is hybridized? Is, are the F hybridized? Absolutely not, okay? The F is not hybridized. It's the outermost, as I've drawn before. It's the central atom. And what is the hybridization of the central atom? My friends in chemistry. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four pairs of electrons surround the central atom means an S and what? Three Ps came together. This is SP3 also. So this is like two tetrahedrals kind of uh, attached to each other. Now to draw this, well, a little bit challenging, okay? I'll give you the skeleton, okay, and you get the idea from there. So to draw this, I would take my two SP3s. Now there's four of them. They repel themselves into the shape. So SP3 and then another SP3. And they would do what? They'd bond there. And then you put the four valence. Every carbon has the four. And then you'd have your fluorine. And as we did before in other drawings, fluorine would have what? It would be unhybridized. It's a terminal bonding. You don't need to explain the outside one bonded element. So it would look like this, unhybridized P, another unhybridized P. This is not this. These are individual sp3 orbitals, four of them. This is one p orbital. This is another p orbital, and here's a third. And to show that it's hybridized or unhybridized, there's an s. And how many valence? 
seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This P is filled, as the rest of them are. And I would draw this uh, seven more, one, two, three, I can do this five more times, okay, to fill in the, the, the five other florins. And I'm not going to show you that. You get the idea, okay? Very simple. All right, that's C2F6. And we'll pick up. Okay, that was C2F6. All right. So now the next one I want to do is C2CL4. Okay, so C2, Cl4. Same thing, carbons in the middle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four valence. As you can see, there's going to be four pairs of electrons for each of the carbons. Okay, now there's four chlorines now. Four chlorines. So if we put a chlorine here, Okay, I'm just going to do dots here for this all intents and purposes. Put a chlorine here. Put a chlorine here. Seven valence electron. Put a chlorine here. We have issues. Why do we have issues? Well, we have two, four, six, seven electrons for each carbon. It wants to fill that octet if it can. The only way to explain this is if we move these electrons down to make something called a double bond. That's important. Now, I'm going to rewrite this to make more sense because now we have a scenario. If you count pairs of electrons, one, two. Now you say, well, Grotsky, there's two of them there. But we're going to learn that second bond or the third bond is something called a pi bond, and we don't consider it. So if there's a double or a triple and there's two pairs here, so it's a double bond, we're just going to consider one of them. So we can still say that the electrons are in the same region. All right. So if you see that there's actually three pairs of electrons, bonded or non-bonded, this is different. This is no longer sp3. Okay. So let me show you. Let me rewrite this a little bit. Three pairs of electrons. So let me just redo this to make more sense. So what we have is we have our carbon with our double bond. That's two pairs. And then we're going to have our chlorine seven valence, and this is what we have. Notice it looks different, okay? So again, if I count pairs of electrons, one, two, and three, it is not going to be sp3. There's going to be S and two P's. It's not going to be tetrahedral anymore. And again, this double bond is just two pairs. So you would count one, two, and three. How would three pairs of electrons look surrounding a central atom? Well, it will look like this. And this is a planar molecule. It's on the same plane. And there's three of them. And this is called trigonal planar, triangle in the same plane. So when you have this shape, that means an S and two P's had to come together. Three orbitals that have changed to make the same are now an S and two P's. This is now sp2. And something special about sp2's, what do you think the bond angles are of the sp2? They're always uh, 120, a third of a circle. So our sp Three, we always get that 109.5. Of course, it can be smaller if there's a lone pair, okay? But in sp2, it's 120. It's a third of a circle, okay? So this is sp2. So let's draw it. sp2. So here's one sp2. 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 SP2, here's another SP2, and I'm drawing the best I can. So you get three orbitals that are SP2. S and two P's make three equal orbitals. Here's one bond between the two carbons. 
Okay, now let me just help you. Carbon, if you remember, had two bonds between. So I only have one bond. Carbon must have what? Four. So I'm accounting for only what? Three right now. All right, so right now carbon is missing one. Well, let's figure this out. This other one comes from the chlorine, and of course, unhybridized for reasons we've explained previously. There's my PX, PY, PZ, and here is my what? My S. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I would do this three more times. But still, we've got the same issue. Carbon is missing a bond. Well, if it's sp2, that means an s and two p's came together. There is one p. Remember, there's three p's, right? There are three p orbitals. So each of these carbons has an unhybridized p. And again, how many valence electrons does these carbons have? Let's do it individually. One, two, three, four. Let's do the other. One, two, three, four. Now, of course, these bond with chlorine. And this is where the second bond is. Remember, this is one p orbital. So we call this py. Call this py the other. And what do we have here? is that we have this bonding occurring between unhybridized p orbitals. It's sp2, and how do I know? Count the pairs of electrons. Remember, this will be a chlorine here. This will be a chlorine here. This will be another chlorine here, just like this. I'm not going to draw it for time reasons. So you've got chlorines here, here, and here. One, two, three pairs of electrons, and the other pair, okay, is involved with a pi bond. So that carbon double bonded, okay, to the chlorines, that second bond is that perpendicular bonding. It's a weaker bond. It's outside the, uh, uh, the nuclear radius here. It's kind of outside, but there's a blending of this orbital. Notice this is the same orbital. This is one electron, this is one electron. These two unhybridized P's share two to fill it up, and that creates the second bond. So anytime you've got something double bonded, the second bond has to be what we call a pi bond. The bond where you have direct overlapping is called a sigma bond. It's much stronger. Okay? Moving forward, C2H2. Let's do C2H2. Now C2H2... C2, H2. Let's do it. Carbon has just an H. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Each hydrogen brings one. And there it is. Okay. This carbon feels like it has eight. This one feels like it has eight. Okay, and has the noble gas configuration. And of course, hydrogen feels like it's like helium by having two. So how do I draw this one? Hmm, this is weird. It's got triple bond. Well, count pairs of electrons. One, two. Even though there's three pairs, there's, there's electrons in the same region. So just like we did this with double bonds, here we have it as well. So we only have a carbon with two equal orbitals. That means an S and a P came together. SP hybridization. So this is an SP orbital, an SP orbital. The other carbon has a what? SP orbital, an SP orbital. Here's one bond. Now if an S and P came together, are we missing two more P's? I can do this. Two more P's? Right. So this has an unhybridized P orbital here unhybridized p orbital here and here. So what's the valence electrons for the carbon? One, two, three. Hmm. Remember, this is one p orbital. There are two p's for each carbon, so we have to draw another one. This could be the z coming at you. 
Let's put the valence in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Put the hydrogen in. Hydrogen is here, circular, 1s, it's terminal. So there's my first bond, sigma. Where's my pi bond? Above. That's my second bond. And my third bond, hard to see, front and back. In order to have a second and third bond, I need to have unhybridized P's to allow that pi bonding. The first bond is a direct overlap. Because of structural problems, you can't have another overlapping one. Okay? And that's the structure of C2H2. Last one, which is much like this, is CO2. Now, by the way, when you have SP hybridization, you always are going to be linear. Why? because you only have two electron orbitals that repel themselves in a 180 bond angle. One, another way to look at it is because there's no lone pairs above or below to push it down or up, this stays linear. Last one, CO2. One of my favorites. Carbon in the middle. And if you do a Lewis dot diagram, you should get this, four valence. Each oxygen has six. Two lone pairs. So my gosh, there's no lone pairs to bend this down. There's only two regions where there's electrons. Best way to say it. So guess what? This is SP hybridized. There's only two regions for the central atom. Here's one and two. If it's SP hybridized, how many P orbitals have yet to be put together? two more. And that creates an unhybridized P. Anything extra becomes unhybridized P's. Put one there. And of course, you've got another front and back. This will look familiar. We just kind of did one like this. So that's my carbon. Four valence electrons. These are my PZ, P, let's say Y. And this is the same orbital. Okay. Oxygen. Well, it's terminal. It bonds on one side. doesn't have to be hybridized to make this understandable. So here's an unhybridized P here, unhybridized P here, and a third. There's three orbitals for the P, and because unhybridized, it still has its S. Okay, so we have how many valence electrons? One, two, three. Let's do um, four. Let's do... Five and six. So here's the first bond called a sigma, direct overlap, strong. Whereas the second bond, hey, pi bond, and this is one bond. This is one P, one P. Okay, where's the other? Well, here's another oxygen, unhybridized. One P, here's another. Here's another, and here's the S. How many valence electrons? One, two, three, four, five, and then one more makes six. Notice this one's locked up because it's bonding, but notice this one has one. So the other pi bond is back to this one and front to this one. It's like a chain link fence. Fence. I've got kind of like that scenario here. Here I have here going this way, and this way is going in front and back, top and bottom, front and back. And that explains the three-dimensional structure. You need to draw these a couple times, you need to look at them, but the bottom line is by drawing a Lewis dot diagram, you can predict that this structure is linear. Two regions of electrons only, no lone pairs has to be SP. SP has to be 180 degree bond angle. Okay? And because of that 180 degree bond angle, it makes this a very symmetrical shape and makes this nonpolar. Hope that helped.